Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, we want to thank you for coming. We've had a spike uh, in our crime rate, homicide rate, during the last month, and I want to take just a moment to talk to you a little bit about it. I'm very happy to have uh, standing with me Mike Harry, our Commonwealth Attorney, uh, Chief Byron Norwood, and our CAO Byron Marshall, and our Deputy Chiefs John Pertula. Did I get it? Where is it? You did. I got it? First time? All right, very good. And Tanya Vincent. Uh, in September, we had uh, 11 homicides in our city, and this is the highest number of homicides that we've had since 2006. There were 12 in 2006. And while we're always attentive and concerned about crime in the city of Richmond, the fact is that we haven't seen double-digit homicides within a single month for quite some time. And I wanted to come to speak to you today because this is of great concern to our citizens and certainly it's a great concern to me. Uh, we're tracking at a pace that indicates uh, that we will probably have an increase in our overall annual uh, homicide rate by the end of the year. And so even as we continue to address these crimes, there are several things that I want to point out, maybe four or five things that I want to say about the situation that we find ourselves in. Uh, the increase in homicides that we've seen does not appear to be related to any gang activity. It does not appear to be related to any drug activity. And so when we look at the number of homicides that we have, there's really no common thread uh, that we can uh, use to get a simple solution to the situation. Uh, even with the spike in homicides, it's important for the citizens of the city to know uh, that our overall crime activity rate is down, decreased by 4%, uh, even with the spike in uh, homicides. The homicides and other violent crimes uh, need to be addressed in a separate, uh, in a separate category. And it's very important for me to tell you uh, that we are seeing a quick response by law enforcement, and I'm happy to be joined by uh, the wonderful persons from law enforcement today and in some cases, uh, the police have been on the scene within a minute, within the same minute uh, that the crime took place. Also, it's important for our citizens to know that the clearance rate uh, of these crimes is extremely strong. Of the 11 homicides in September, six have already been cleared and warrants uh, have been on file. Uh, the overall clearance rate for uh, the year at this time is 77%. Uh, this is higher than the national average, which is only 60, 64%. And so uh, kudos and congratulations to our police department for the wonderful job that they're doing. So let me just uh, draw this conclusion, and hopefully you will help us to get this word out to those who are perpetuating and committing crimes. We want those who are perpetuating and committing crimes to know that you will not get away. If you do these things, that you will be caught, you will be prosecuted, uh, and it is evident by the success rate of these crimes being cleared that if you do it, you're going to get caught. And we want that word to be spread throughout uh, the city of Richmond. Uh, we recognize also the need to bring in additional resources to deal with the problem, and so we are going to do that. We're going to partner with our law enforcement uh, partners from state federal government as well as the participating jurisdictions and the counties. Uh, we're going to do what's necessary to protect our uh, communities. It's also interesting to note that most of these homicides occurred uh, within a geographical area uh, that closely aligns itself uh, with the poverty in our city. And one of the things that our administration has worked hard on, or is working hard on, is the mitigation of poverty. And when we see crimes like this being uh, perpetuated, it's important for us to recognize the overall importance of mitigating poverty because uh, this also has a relationship on 
crime in our community. Uh, I also want to mention the proliferation of illegal guns. Uh, that is something that we are uh, concerned about, always concerned about, and uh, we want to find ways to get these guns off the street. So with that being said, I'm delighted to have our Commonwealth's attorney and our chief of police, and I'm going to ask them to just uh, say a brief word. Mr. Herring and the chief. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I think it's pretty obvious that the mayor is alarmed. Uh, the chief, uh, by his countless nights on the scene and his presence here today, is alarmed, as is Mr. Marshall, as am I. Uh, you are concerned and alarmed, and you should be. The fact of the matter, though, is uh, this is not the first time that the city has suffered a spike in fatal crime. And statistically speaking, it is probably not the last. And I think one of the things that you can count on from us is credibility and candor. And we're never going to stand in front of you and say, all violent crime has or will come to an end in the city. Instead, what we will say is, this is why we think it's happening. These are the forces that we're going to bring to bear in order to curb it. And this is when we think we're going to see uh, a, a, an improvement. One thing I, I, I would ask the, that you all capture from my presence and my comments is, you don't have to think back too far to remember when folks used to joke about the city. And if you traveled outside the city, people would tap you on your shoulder and they'd think they were being funny. And they would characterize Richmond as, as the murder capital of the South, I think it was. And to them, it, it, it was a joke. But to every family member and to every friend of a homicide victim or the victim of a violent crime, it wasn't funny at all. And I'm standing here with these ladies and gentlemen arrayed behind me to assure you we will not return to those ugly designations. Too much has come along in the city by way of uh, police work, uh, the relationship between the Commonwealth Attorney's Office and the police department, and indeed the strides the city has taken to correct and improve criminogenic factors for us to uh, tend back toward the days that, that citizens came to expect nothing more than high rates of violent crime. So I'm going to stop my comments there because I know you all are bound to have questions and I want to reserve some time to answer them. But I will tell you this, the police department is clearing these cases. And they're not just going to clear the cases and rush to arrest so that we can stand in front of you and say we, we've got an arrest. They're going to build the cases as they've done in the past. They're going to work with my office. We're going to mature those cases for prosecution. And then we're going to get the best outcome that we will get. But make no mistake about it, the people who committed these crimes will bear the burden of paying the price and accounting for their actions. So thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I just want to take the time to thank the mayor and his staff for their support. I want to thank the men and women of the Richmond Police Department for their tireless work during this difficult time. And I want to thank the community for supporting us and continuing to support us as we uh, go through this endeavor. I want to reiterate a couple of things that the mayor and Mr. Uh, Herring talked about. We, you will see an increased presence in these neighborhoods. You will see uh, a higher visibility from the police department and you will see our partners working together with us over the next several weeks and months to come uh, as we transgress through mitigating these crimes. I want to reiterate to you that we are doing everything possible to make these neighborhoods safe. We're making sure that our officers are diligent in their investigations and making sure that the people in these neighborhoods are well informed as to what's taking place. And lastly, as, as Mr. Herring talked about, we're going to work strongly Commonwealth's Attorney's Office to vigorously prosecute the offenders that are responsible for these crimes. Thank you. All right, so, so at this time we're going to take questions. <clears throat> I want to uh, recognize Reba Tramel from the 8th District. Thank you for being here. Any questions at this time? Without going into too much detail, um, we're looking with to work with our federal and state partners, obviously. Uh, that will include some of the FBI, DEA, ATF. Uh, and we work well with our, our, our county partners as well. So that consortium will be in full force 
over the next several weeks. Mr. Mayor, do you still have confidence in Chief Rowan and the police leadership? Um, I just told you that these crimes are being cleared uh, at an accelerated rate, that we're beating the national average of crimes being cleared. And so our police are doing a great job, and the chief is leading the police department. Chief, why do you think this fight happened? You know, it's a good question. Uh, we can only go back through history and see that it's over 10 years since we've had this type of work, uh, this type of effort. <laughs> I can tell you that what we're doing now in conjunction with the community, we're gonna see this come to a conclusion. Uh, the men and women of the police department are working harder than ever before. The community supports us. And so with those two factors working together and the mayor's support, you're gonna see this come to an end. Chief, four of these uh, homicides took place with a scene of very close proximity. They're talking about the Oak Grove neighborhood, Hillside neighborhood. Will that area be targeted specifically? Um, and, and is it the mapping of it all? Are you focused on that neighborhood? Absolutely. Um, we have to go to where the crime is, and the, the area you just spoke about is where we're going to be. Um, but we're not we're not going to forget some of the other parts of the city that need our attention as well. Chief, you had focused a lot on this partnership with the faith community, yes. targeting some of those neighborhoods that have seen some of these homicides. Do you think that's still working, or does it need some readjustment? You know, I think the proof is in the pudding. We're talking about people working with us people talking to us, people having faith in us. And I think that effort is yielding some of the great results in terms of the solvability of these cases. Do you continue to encourage neighborhoods and residents to stay informed and not be scared to speak up if they see something suspicious? Absolutely, that's, that's what solves these crimes. People stepping up, making the phone call, working with the detectives to bring these cases to a conclusion. What would you tell the people who are scared? They have a right to be scared, but we are here. We are here and we're not going anywhere. We're gonna make sure that they're safe. What's the, um, the, is there a connection, this is probably an obvious question, but to, you know, the mayor talked about poverty and the fact that homicides are taking place in close proximity to our forest neighborhood. How much of it, are you have you seen a spike in robberies? Uh, how much of it is economic related? And, and is there a trend there? Yeah. You know, that, that's a good question, and I think one uh, fortunate uh, fact that we can report to you is that we aren't seeing a correlation between uh, high-level drug activity and the killings. And I think that was driving a lot of the homicides in the late 90s uh, and at the turn of the century. Instead, uh, in some instances, there appears to be some history of interpersonal dispute between the victim and, and some of the suspected shooters. Sometimes our victims don't enjoy clean hands, as you know. That doesn't justify the death of any person, of course, but it is a fact of things in the city of Richmond as it is in many other cities. And then you mentioned robbery. You know, what might at first blush appears to be, appear to be a random shooting often by way of anecdote, uh, suggests that it might have been a botched robbery. So one of the things that the chief and the mayor have been saying to the citizens for the last two years is to be vigilant, to be on the lookout. If you're getting out of your car at night, look around. These are simple things that I tell my wife and my daughters and that I do myself. You know, we remember from seven years ago, if you're in your house, don't sit with the front door open, lock your door. If you're walking along the street, try to be observant of, of, of dusk and nightfall and try to be indoors. And these, are, these, these apprehensions aren't unique to Richmond. I think you would, you would observe people telling you to do this in any city or in any county. It's just our density that, for want of a better term, makes some neighborhoods easy for predators. And, and unfortunately, we're seeing a spike of it in the south side, but we've seen it elsewhere. And we've responded in the past, and we are responding this time. Thank you. All right, so once again, we want to thank our uh, officers for the fine job that they're doing. And we also want to thank the citizens for the fine job that they're doing in helping us to solve these crimes. And we elicit and solicit their support, continued support, in helping us uh, through this difficult time. And we solicit your support in getting the word out uh, about, this, about the information that we share with you today. So thank you very much for coming.